Child, when he yeeted her into the abyss, it literally took me out. If you guys are new here, my name is Ashley, and this is My Sweet Perspective, where I give my take on all things TV and movie related. Back to talk about a brand new movie that just premiered yesterday on Netflix, Damsel, starring Bobby Brown <laughs> and Angela Bassett, Robin Wright. It's star-studded. And today, to join me for this movie review, I have Mr. J., from Bay KJ TV, come to the stage, Mr. J. <laughs> Hello, Miss Ashley. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. Are you excited to talk about this movie? Are you excited? I am. I'm very excited. Very excited. Thank you for having me. And yeah, let's get into it. I'm ready. Absolutely. Let's do this thing, you guys. So both of us individually, not knowing that we had both watched it, um, sat up and watched this movie on yesterday. And I think we have maybe some aligning thoughts, maybe not. But do we want to start out with a rating, Jay, or do we want to hold that until the end of the video? Uh, it's up to you. I'm following your lead either way. Okay, let's go. Overall, how would you rate this movie? And first of all, tell us what you're looking for when you're rating a film. I'm curious. Okay, so um, what I'm looking for when I'm rating a film is definitely cinematography. Absolutely. The storyline has to make sense to me. And of course, this is a fantasy. So some things, you know, I kind of like, you know, said, OK, OK, that's all right. But I'm looking for the storyline, the actual character, how interesting the lead character is and whether or not it's going to connect. So overall, I gave it a solid 6.5. Oh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> 6.5 overall rating. And we will get into later in the video why we've come to that rating. But for me, when I look at like reviewing a movie or whatever, I'm actually looking for how the movie made me feel. If I felt connected to the characters, if it elicited any sort of emotion. Uh, and if, if in fantasy, did they tell me a compelling story? You know, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I also look again at cinematography uh, and how well it's acted. But for me, I would probably give it a seven. I would give it a strong C. Um, it kept my attention, you know, and that's that's doing a lot. If a movie can keep me focused in, I know we are on the winning side. So let's get right into the cast. OK, so as I said, Star studded, right? We had Millie Bobby Brown playing Princess Elodie, and we all know her from Stranger Things, right? What That's was her right. character like in Stranger Things? Because you know, I didn't. Well, Elle was, yeah, I know you didn't see it, unfortunately, but yeah, I, I'm sure you will. But uh, Elle was a, a force to be reckoned with, like, she was definitely different. She had these special powers, and she was like very mysterious, you know, you couldn't really tell exactly what she was thinking but she had a lot of there was a lot of things that happened to l in stranger things but to see her in this she definitely that was a stretch it was a stretch as far as like you know her acting range so oh, wow. i really appreciated what she did in this and how she acted in this it was definitely a step up i would say come through miss millie young lady yeah. okay next we had nick robinson who played prince henry the one who yeeted her. oh let me just say this you guys this is um spoiler filled if you didn't already know spoilers is what i do um so <laughs> if you haven't watched it click off the video but then come back after you've watched it and talk with us about it but nick robinson played prince henry the young man who yeeted uh princess elodie into the abyss um, and I, I recognized him immediately from the movie, everything, everything, where he kind of plays the love interest of this girl who has a disease where she can't be exposed to any of the elements. And I really liked him in this. So this is kind of a departure, right? Mm -hmm. Um, from that next, we have Robin Wright, who plays the evil queen, Queen Isabel. Mm -hmm. What did you think of Robin Wright? Have you seen her in any other shows or movies? I don't remember her uh, seeing her in any any shows. I know we discussed it before, but I, I know she's a pretty good actress as well. But the, the way that she played this queen, I guess she did a great job because <laughs> I definitely did not like the queen. So if that was the intention, it absolutely came through. It did it. She it it did it because she had no heart, no soul. She she was cut throat. And of course, I remember Robin Wright from House of Cards with He Who Must Not Be Named. Um, a great series on Netflix, nevertheless. If you have not seen it, I'd highly recommend. Next, we have the Angela Bassett playing Lady Bayford. And I know we both know 
who Auntie Angela is. That's um, right. What did you think of her performance in this film? So um, as we discussed, like the first thing when I saw her, I was just like, okay, I'm thinking 911, right? Because, you know, she's the star. She's the executive producer in that, right? So I'm thinking, think, okay, yeah. who's she's gonna sa- who is she going to save today, right? Like what's going to happen? So <laughs> when she was on the boat and she was speaking, it was kind of, it took a while for me to kind of say, okay, I see that she's in this medieval time. But there was just some phrases that kind of threw it off. That was like, that is not medieval, <laughs> Angela. You know? what's, what's going on? What is this, y'all? Like, nah, nah, that's not medieval. But I think she did a great job in this. But listen, it, it's spoiler filled, right? So at the end of the day, make sure you listen to your black mama, all right? Because <laughs> she's going to try part. to look out for you, right? <laughs> that part, that part. And I think the scene is on the boat. And she's like, what in the world? I said, now, Auntie yeah. Angela. <laughs> Auntie Angela, come on. <laughs> and then uh, Ray Winstone plays Lord Bayford, which is yeah. uh, Lady Bayford's husband, of course. And then Brooke Carter, not pictured, plays Floria, which is Princess Elodie's younger sister. Mm-hmm. So basically, the movie opens up and we kind of find um, Lord Bayford and his wife. And they're kind of in the struggle, right? They apparently have some lands, but they don't have enough money to feed the people. Um, They're kind of in a desperate way. And he's been presented with an offer. He has two daughters from a first marriage, Elodie and Floria. And uh, basically, he's been made an offer to marry off Elodie to save their little kingdom, their little area, right? Is that what you got from the first, from the opening of this? Okay. And now- this is them on the ship on the way. What did you think of the of the ride? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Angela Bassett, her character playing the stepmom here, you know, uh, definitely it, it made sense. Uh, what are you doing up there? Come down here. You know, first impressions or everything. So she was playing the typical mom that wanted to make sure that her daughters were presenting themselves properly and that she, uh, the, the lead character, was going to present herself properly as well. But if you backtrack, though, we need to backtrack a little bit. Okay. We do need to talk about, you know, the king prior to this moment and him going into battle against the dragon. Tell us the story, Mr. J. Right. So for whatever <laughs> reason, these guys are going into this cavern to go get this dragon. And the man, the dragon was fierce. The dragon was spitting fire. I mean, it was crazy. And then... The dragon takes out all the men except for this guy right here, who was the king. And then it shoots off into now the king is older with the family and everything else like that. So we don't know what happened. Right. We don't know what happened. What happened. He's still alive, obviously. So something must have happened between him and the dragon. And then we get to this part. So, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, let's move forward. So now we are in the new kingdom and we are meeting the family that we are marrying the older daughter off to Elodie, right? This is her new family, welcomed with open arms. And I believe they were overcome with just how beautiful this new land is. You guys, when they got off the ship, honey, it was red carpet treatment. Do you hear me? Beyond anything they'd ever seen. And they get what seemingly a very warm welcome. Were you skeptical originally or how did you feel when they came in? Well, again, you know, they played a good role to make us feel like they were open and welcome to the new family, to the princess. You know, I did notice that the queen did not speak to Angela Bassett's character. I did peep the little shade there that she was just talking to the princess and talking to the king. Right. And then, of course, Floria, she spoke as well and they spoke to it, but they didn't speak to Angela Bassett's character. So I did notice a little tiny shade there. But overall, they were, they were very welcoming. So you wouldn't think that anything would be kind of shady about that. Yeah. Now what she says though, to the man, she, when she said, um, let's you and I talk about these wedding preparations only to him, not excluding Angela completely. And of course, later on, we see them have an exchange where, uh, you know, Angela's like, you know, we're going to be family now. And she's like, sis, (laughs) we'll never be family. You must be forgetting your station and your place. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. and I was like, (laughs) super shade. (laughs) Excuse me. Right. (laughs) Who are you talking to? And so (laughs) then Auntie Angela's mind, we already know, is like, these people ain't it. 
ain't it? Right. And what I think we don't have pictures for is seeing the father come out of the chambers with the queen, uh, really distraught, really disheveled, really feeling away. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm Angela trying to have, a, or Lady Bayford, I'm sorry, trying to have a conversation with him about, you know, what was said, what happened, why are you like this? I have a bad feeling. And him shutting her down completely. Did you know then something was up? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And and I did notice, you know, when the queen was speaking and I was like, is she the king or the queen? Like, what happens? I'm seeing this guy next to her with a crown. Like, why isn't he speaking? Like, what is going on? So she was totally dominant of the conversation. Them two talking in their little chamber and, and then, you know, um, the king coming out like really upset. I knew something was wrong. There was a deal that went sour. There was something that I kind of figured there was something that he wasn't really in agreement with. So yeah. I knew something was coming. I just didn't know exactly what it was. Absolutely. And then we see stepmother, Lady Bayford, go and run to Elodie, right, in Floria's yes. room. And she's like, look, daughter, I know we haven't always been the closest, but this is not it. I have a bad feeling. And when she said that, I said, you better listen to that woman. She <laughs> might tell you a joke, but she's not going to lie to you. That's right. Because I loved in this how we didn't get the typical evil stepmother, right? Like in all of these kind of fairy tales, epic fantasy stories, nine times out of 10, the stepmother is going to be evil and mistreat the girls. In this one, we saw that maybe they weren't the closest, but she really did have their best interest at heart. And I think even at one point, Elodie says, you know, she she doesn't mean any harm. Like she... <laughs> She's our stepmom. She's just who she is, right? She cares right. about appearances, all these things. But ultimately, she cared more about Elodie yes. than probably even the daddy did. Mm. Well, we know we know what happened. So, yes, absolutely. The daddy didn't, yeah. you know. But it was all for the gold, right? We need more gold. We need all of this and that. So we would survive. Like, if you don't marry and do this, then the whole family will go down and shambles. So. And so what, what Lady Mayford said is, says is this, you have a chance, you still have time. And the father comes in at that moment is like, has time for what? Elodie says, oh, nothing, father. And I'm thinking that was your chance, sis. It's over now. Mm -hmm. It's over for That's you. It. And so she proceeds to marry uh, the prince. And this is her saying goodbye to Floria because now she believes that she is off to have this amazing, beautiful, wonderful life. Yes. But we're, we're taking a trip first. So I guess she thought this was her honeymoon. <laughs> right. She says, where are we going? He said, oh, I told you that our family is steeped in tradition uh, and we have these, you know, different ceremonies that we do to commemorate special events. And so that's what we're doing. She's like, okay, okay. Now, Jay, uh -huh. if you were young Elodie uh -huh. and you rolled up and saw these people in what looked like a medieval skull and crossbones secret society meeting, what would you have done? I'd be like, um, all right, I'm good. Like, can I go back to the castle now? Like, uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Like, uh, I would find every excuse to get up out of there. Because, like, once I saw them riding to this location by themselves without the guards, remember when they were talking and the guards was, like, following close. But where are the guards now? Oh, they're not there. And then we go up and we see these people with masks on. And I'm like, it looks real dreary. I'm like, nah, this Demonic. is... Demonic. Yeah, I was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I got to get up out of here. L listen, um, you know, I got to go to the bathroom. Can you let me go back? Can I, I got to go. <laughs> and I, excuse me, finger up, because I'm, hey. I'm hitting the door. I would have hey. remembered what my what my stepmama said, mm -hmm. and I'd have been like, okay, she was right. But even up to this point, what shocked me, and this is kind of one of my reasons, I guess, for the scoring. This was kind of the first time in the story where I felt like, okay, this is unbelievable, sis. You don't have mm -hmm. any awareness. I get naivete, right, being a right. young woman, not knowing the ways of the world. But you had to feel something ominous. And they are telling you literally the story of mm -hmm. all these women that they've literally sacrificed to this monster. <laughs> right. And you still walk in hand in hand, honey. Yeah. She was just so trusting. So, like, you know, she was looking at that castle, to be honest with you. She's like, I want to live here. Like, <laughs> this is an amazing castle. This is great. I'm eating the grapes, you know. <laughs> so she wanted to just do what 
her father's bidding and go along with whatever they're going to do. But yes, I feel you like she, it's time to go. <laughs> See this and crazy I will shit. say her first meeting with the prince was good. He was kind. And that was her biggest hope, right? She was like, I just hope that he's kind. I'm prepared to do this for my family. It's not about yeah. my happiness. But, you know, I just hope that he's kind. And he just literally turned out to be a weakling. And I think this is the moment she's learning a little bit more. Um, but I still don't think it was official in her mind until the man yeeted her <laughs> off of the bridge. <laughs> Saw it coming. I saw it coming. <laughs> Especially when he's like took her up in his arms and he's walking all slow and he's like, close your eyes. I got you. Like, what? Like, no, I'm not closing my eyes while you're on this bridge. Like, when we get across this bridge, I will like close my eyes so then you can walk me down to the horse. But I ain't closing my eyes for you, Jack. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm literally not closing my eyes. I'm not. I'm not. And so now she is in the cavernous lair of this dragon, yes. right? And all of a sudden, the dragon starts calling her little bird and <laughs> <laughs> wants to play a game of what is seemingly cat and mouse, right? Yes. I, I'm going to play with my food mm -hmm. before I eat it. Yeah. Um, which brings me to kind of my second point of contention with the story, right? Mm -hmm. um, because we all heard the story that was being told initially. I'm thinking young Elodie is going to start putting two, to, two and two together, especially once the dragon starts talking like, this isn't really about me. Maybe... Mm -hmm. You know, I need to get some additional information. <laughs> I mean, but in addition, running for your life, because I mean, yes. run for your life, because there's no information desk uh, for you to ask questions at this no. point. Um. <laughs> no. So now what did you think about her um, survival and kind of adapting in this space, you know, after being yeeted? Yeah. So I was kind of torn between this. Like, I know this is fantasy, right? We see a dragon. So I'm, I'm like, OK, anything can happen. That. Right, the talking, right, exactly. You know, Puff the Magic Dragon is talking. It's like, <laughs> run, run, run. And, I, and and first off, I want to say I love the special effects. I love when the dragon spits fire and it's like water and spit. It's just like all over the place. And I love that, right? Kind of like Godzilla. But um, her having these survival instincts and tactics and cutting her, her dress and making a little tie to for the burns, like all of that was just like, uh, I, we didn't get any backstory to her learning all of this, but I'm glad that she was taught in this way. Again, he has two daughters, right? The king has two daughters. Mm -hmm. We don't have no um, inclination that there's a son. So I'm thinking that he probably taught her some survival tactics along the way, like she would be his son. So it's good that she had that, but um, I, I like how she was just getting through it all. She, and, uh, she definitely thought on her feet. I will give yes. my good sis that. She said, yes. oh, I ran out of my little light that I had, my little light that I tried to make shine and it went out. So Love now let part. me find these creatures, which actually, mm -hmm. I guess it was just happenstance, right? That. Right. You know, she was like, I'm not going to hurt you. She's 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 Snow White up in this piece, talking to the creatures, <laughs> using them as her light source and then finds that they'll actually heal her burns. So yes. I mean, a win yes. is a win. But can we talk about how beautiful these moments were in the cave yeah. um, with these creatures? I mean, with the fire, with the creatures, with like the birds that the dragon sat on fire. Initially, I was like captivated yeah. like oh yeah yeah the, the special effects the cinematography the way that the set designing that's what it is the set designs were just pretty amazing yeah this is incredible look at that yeah, yeah. beautiful I feel like and i'm at disney world <laughs> yeah yeah it was good to see i love a strong heroine but i do mm -hmm. feel like they could have gone deeper with her character um okay. a lot of people had said um they had talked about how this should have been a series. And I literally would have signed up um, for a series had we gotten more depth out of who Elodie was as a person. Because right. she seemed, I mean, for her age, she was very mature. Um, mm -hmm. She had a completely different mindset than a lot of the princesses that we've seen in the past. So I would have loved for us to have been able to explore that. And more. even the prince mentioned that. He was like, uh, yeah, you seem... You seem less flowery 
than your letters. <laughs> so yeah. he even noticed in the first, you know, conversation that they had that she wasn't the regular princess. She's like, you know, look, I know what I'm doing. And my father taught me this and I have skills and I'm not just a damsel in distress. Like mm-hmm. I can absolutely, you know, survive on my own and, and stand on my own, which I like. Absolutely. And then we might as well talk about the elephant, I guess, that's in the room. Because when I had posted my initial short about this, a lot of people in comments were talking about how um, they were not for Damsel the movie because they felt as though it was whitewashed. And they got that implication because this is, well, there's a screenplay that prompted a book that prompted the movie, I suppose. And the character on the book cover is clearly a woman of Asian descent, right? So how do we feel about this, Jade? Is it, I mean, we know it's nothing new. We talked about that offline, but right, right. what are so, your thoughts on that? So my thoughts are, to be honest with you, I knew nothing about the screenplay. I knew nothing about anything. This is the first time I'm being introduced to Damsel, right? So if there's any backstory, any back, like this is supposed to be an Asian and all this and that, I'm honestly, I'm just a person watching a movie for the first time. I don't know anything about that. So do I really care about it? Not really, but this happens often. Like if you watch movies, there's plenty of characters that may have been a male, now they're female, or they may have been white and now they're black. So it's like, I'm not really getting into the politics of it. I just want a good movie to watch, to be honest with you. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And to those people, they they have their opinion. It's okay. It's okay to have your opinion about it. But I knew nothing about that prior to seeing this, but I enjoyed it. And I get it. And I, you know, and I'm all for representation. I want all of us in every color and creed to be able to act um, and express ourselves creatively. However, I guess we just run into... Um, the issue of like, this is an age old thing. Hollywood been doing it, right? So it's like, you can't really pick and choose. And it's especially challenging in the world of fantasy, right? Because it's fantasy. (laughs) So unless ethnicity, um, gender plays a role in who the character is, I mean, you know, and like great acting, great acting is great acting right at yeah. the end of the day little mermaid you know was was what's her name Haley, right oh, yeah. like come on like she did a good job to me you know i love i like little mermaid you know that yeah. version and i like the original too so it's like here we are once again yeah. with the same old thing like again if you look at the 10 commandments like come on if you go way back the- <laughs> Yeah, You know, Moses wasn't a white guy, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yet we're watching it almost every Christmas. Right. So, mm-hmm. again, this is happening. Come on. A good story is a good story. Great acting is great acting. That part, period. Um, And so basically, and let's go back, because this is when she's kind of like, OK, how am I going to figure out to get out of here? Right. What is my way out of here? Because I'm a survivor. Um, She finds a wall that has the names of all of the previous princesses that they've sacrificed in honey. Crazy. The list went on and on and on because apparently they do this three at a time. So he had to marry three times, sacrifice all of those brides. And then we find out later he would be free to choose the wife of his choice after he had made his sacrifices. So she's finding her way. She's navigating. She's learning the ins and outs of the cavern. Um, And well, let me go ahead. So she eventually finds her way to this crevice, right? Um, This crack in the armor, baby. But when I tell you it was like a thousand foot drop, like Mm. my goodness wasn't going anywhere. And the dragon comes and taunts her and is like, baby, you're not getting out of here. Mm. Do you hear me? You're not getting out. You're stuck like Chuck. Then we eventually hear another voice in the cavern. Papa Bear, Lord Baylor, whoever he is, comes back to find his daughter because he says, I know I sold my daughter for 50 pieces, 30 pieces of silver. Basically he mm. Judas there. He Judas her, right? Mm. Like he sold his child, but he couldn't live with himself though. So he's there to fight the dragon to get his daughter. That goes awry. He's taken out of there. She gets away mm-hmm. because we know why, because the dragon is painting the sky with flames. That means the sacrifice was not good. He didn't get his due. And we'll get into that story later. But this is the queen like, okay, this isn't going to work. We need another sacrifice. Uh, Y'all gave us this daughter. She got away. We need Floria. Mm, We paid for a daughter. (laughs) You're going to give us a daughter. Wow. What did you think of that scene when they came to get Floria? Yeah, that was 
heart crushing. Like, are you serious? Like, you really like how did they know? Like, how did come on, man? Like, it was it was heart crushing to get the little girl. Now you're gonna you're gonna marry the little girl. You're gonna like come on, like that's yeah. terrible, evil, straight evil. Yeah. She said, what she tell them? She said, you're soft. Okay. So basically they go, they, we know that Lord Maylord is dead now. So only is left is, is stepmama. Okay. Auntie right. Angela. And so she's like, no, you can't take her baby. When I tell you they stabbed her up with a quickness, it wasn't no conversation. Mm. It wasn't no, hi, how you doing? It was okay. We're going to cut you. Take this baby wow. immediately Too sweet. She goes print. Now this is the time Prince stood up a little bit. Okay. He ain't stopped nothing, but at least he said, she's a child. What did you think of Prince Henry in that moment? Were you like, okay, he's finally doing what he needs to do? I mean, he had a little conscious, but still he's going to roll with what his mother's going to tell him to do, right? So Absolutely. good job for like two seconds, but uh, you really didn't do anything. No, nope, because <laughs> what did she do? She cut that baby, did their little blood ritual sacrifice, and yeeted that baby oh, off yes. into the cavern. <laughs> crazy <laughs> this movie crazy <laughs> okay but now here is where we get the details here is yeah. where we are going to get more information right so yes. um they have floria um floria bumps into stepmother because stepmother is still riding for her baby she said listen i gotta get my child blood or not i'm, I'm riding for my baby as black mothers do okay um and so <laughs> She gets her and she's like, they have Floria and Elodie's like, I'm going to get my little sister. So mm -hmm. that's when, baby, let me cut this dress up. Yeah. Let me set up a whole little time release system in the cave. Mm -hmm. uh, but the dragon's cradling the, the thing because at this point, we know the story of the dragon. Do you want to talk about the story? You want me to tell the story about the Please. dragon? Okay. So basically... What we saw earlier in the land was the king of the land at that time, um, unsolicited. They said that they were coming to save the people, do all this stuff. It wasn't that. They were what 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 colonizers do. That's what that's what they do, right? They come and they try to take the land, right? Conquer. Conquer, exactly. So they came, um, and the dragon had the three eggs, okay, his daughters, these three daughters, right? They come mm -hmm. in and kill the baby, kill the eggs, do everything, kill, slaughter. Okay. And so at this point, the dragon's like, y'all came in here unprovoked. Yes. You killed my babies. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when I tell you he snatches each of the men, as Jay explained in the beginning, and he leaves the king. And so apparently in this moment, the king made a deal with the dragon for his own life and the life of his family. Right. Which was that going forward for all generations, every, every, um, they'd have to give three daughters away to this dragon. I think it was like the annual sacrifice to appease for the three daughters that were taken from dragon. Okay. So right. dragon has been under the impression this whole time that these have been daughters, descendants of that King who came to pillage and do all that, not knowing that they had flipped the game and they're taking girls from all over the world <laughs> to right. sacrifice them so that they can stay intact. That's Dragon correct. don't know that. Dragon thinks Elodie is one of them. She tries to explain it, but Dragon's not not hearing it. So battle ensues because the dragon's like, you're just going to piss. You poke me with that sword. You're just going to piss me off. And she's right. like, well, I'm going to poke you anyway. Right. So we've got <laughs> Dragon bleeding out a little bit. Uh, but then our girl Elodie had street smarts. OK, she used the flames of the dragon against the dragon. You know, then they have a heart to heart. Elodie's like, I'm, you know, sorry that happened to you, but I'm not one of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> then and she shows she, the hand too. She shows the yeah, hand with the split so in it. Like, she says, that's how, that's the blood you smell. Cause the dragon said, I smell their blood. That's the mm -hmm. blood. <sighs> so then after all is said and done, the dragon is burning in its own flames. Mm -hmm. Elodie goes to the light source in the cave and she gets the little creatures that heal burns and she heals the dragon and Elodie makes a deal of her own yes she does what's the deal Mr. J well at this point <laughs> let's go get the family that set us all up and lied to you to me to everybody let's go get them let's go get them <laughs> So look at her. She's out ready for blood. She said, I'm coming back to the castle. And they're gasping. They're clutching their pearls because 
who do you think you are? You you think because you escaped the dragon, you something special? Mm -hmm. We should be afraid of you? you? Yeah. (laughs) You know what I like, though, before she walked in, which was really a great touch, was the coin that they gave her. And she rolled the coin in when they was about to marry the next girl. And they picked it up like, what is this? Like, boom, and she walks in. Great That was a great scene. Cinematic, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was. And then, so she also warns the girl he's about to marry because remember, he's got to do three. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so she's like, get your family, get your stuff, get your hat, get your coat, get out of here because it's about to go up, right? That's right. That's when the queen chimes in. Yes, that's when the queen comes in. Well, you don't think we're supposed to be scared of you? LED says, don't be scared of me, sis. Right. Here comes the dragon on top of the building. And not Daenerys' dragon, y'all. This is its own dragon. Um, yeah. And again, you know, you know, dragons did, dragon did what dragons do. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was, to me, Jay, I will say it was a satisfying moment. I liked seeing them being consumed by the fire. I don't know. What were, what were your thoughts of that? Okay. So I'm with you on that. Like, you know, and, and, and another cinematography moment was when the dragon was spitting the fire down and they showed the queen just like, no. And it just took really long for her to burn up in the flames. So it was very dramatic. I like it because she was like in the middle of the flames. She was just like melting like, yeah. So it was it was great to see that. And then it was great to see, you know, Elodie, right? Elodie? Mm-hmm. Walk out of the castle while the castle was burning down. Now to me, because we're talking about the ending here. Mm-hmm. To me, I thought it should have ended with her walking out. The, the castle burning down and, you know, her just walking out and the dragon is above her. That would have been a dope ending. Like, boom, that's it. Yeah. But no, <laughs> you're on the boat. You know, Angela Bass's character is there and, and, and Floria is there. And it's like, yes, where are we going? We're going mm-hmm. home. And then you look to the side and you see the dragon. And the dragon's like, oh, we're good, right? Yeah, I'm with you. As, as the dragon goes on to wreak further havoc for the rest of the world, probably. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Or I'm just rolling with you and wh- whoever's going to mess with you, I'm with you. You know, so okay. now she's like, uh, what is it? The, the Lord, not Lord of the Rings. What was it? Oh, the, uh, Game of Thrones. Game Daenerys, of Thrones. Daenerys, so Daenerys, not, Queen right. of Dra- Mother of Dragons. Right, there you go. So now she's the mother of that dragon or they got a bond or whatever the case is. So I thought that, I didn't really like that ending, to be honest with you. That's why I gave it a 6.5. Yeah, I didn't like that ending. Um, it should have ended sooner, but it was good overall. It was. I it would have been. It would have been dope. It would have been really cool to see her kind of like then change the music up, slow down the pace, see her walking off like you with like you said in the background, castle burning to the ground. That would have been kind of an epic vibe and a way to end the series. So yeah. So again, you gave six and a half. I said seven. Um, and like I said, it was really kind of for those couple of things. I was like, if Elodie is this self aware, this mature when they ushered her into her captivity, I think we would have gotten a different response from sis. I really wish they would have delved more into the character of Elodie. I wish we would have gotten to know her more. Also, I would have been curious to see them expand the storyline with the prince and the queen. Mm -hmm. They were interesting characters to me as well. And I would have been interested in seeing why the queen was so cold and heartless. We just saw her as that. But we didn't really get a background as to why. Also, I think she was in the... I thought the dialogue between the dragon and her was a little... uh, (laughs) Fantasy. (laughs) Yes, but was it... And not just that the dragon spoke, but it was like their conversation. Like, I don't don't know. It just... I don't know. It didn't give... I don't know. It just didn't quite give. For all the talking he was doing, I would have thought they would have sussed some of that stuff out earlier. Um, right. in the captivity versus it, you know, going the yeah. way that it did. Would have loved to see this expanded and for us to know the characters more. And that's probably my only complaint, but I will say it held my attention. So Yeah, yeah it held my attention too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and if they as you mentioned earlier, if they made it episodic, I think we would have got everything that you asked for. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would have more time if they did it over like, you know, I don't know, 10 episodes, 12 episodes. And we probably would have got more of the backstory 
of the main character and the queen and everything else like that. But they had to compact it into this little movie. So mm-hmm. I think, like I said, 6.5, you know, yeah, 6.5. I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> it right. was good. Well, that was so fun, you guys. I, I, I'd say still watch it. If you got nothing to do and you need something to watch, it's worth the watch for me. But tell Jay, tell everyone about your channel. They can come and see you, come and visit you. And Absolutely. I will give you the floor. Hold on, let me remove. All right. Well, thank you for having me, Ashley, of My Sweet Perspective. I am VKJ of VKJ TV. Absolutely. I do TV recaps, movie reviews similar to this, and also produce game shows based on the TV shows and do a couple of celebrity interviews as well. So if you're looking for content like that and we have a whole lot of fun when we go live and we talk about these TV shows and everything, definitely come on over and definitely subscribe if you like the vibe. Absolutely. Thank you, Ashley. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on. And I will have all of his stuff linked in my description box below you guys. And if you're still here, honey, after 35 minutes and 53 seconds, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> um, and if you liked this video and if you liked VKJ TV coming over, let me know because we can definitely make more of this happen. Um, but be sure to like, comment, subscribe to both of our channels. Please show love, uh, hit the notification bell, do all the things. And as always, I will see y'all in the next video. Bye. Salute. <laughs>